Welcome to another episode of Africa Farming. My name is Samuel. I hope whatever it is that you're watching us from, you're well. And everything around you is also well. Your friends, family and everyone is well. Now, there's a worrying trend in Africa right now. And especially in Kenya, I've noticed. If I compare when I was young and right now, when it comes to soil quality and the grade of soil that we currently have, I think there's, there has been a lot of soil degradation. And it should be a worrying concern. Most people are not taking this so much into consideration. But there's a lot of soil degradation in Africa or in developing countries. Uh, in this particular episode, we might talk about some of you know, the, the things, personally in my own opinion, that I think contribute to the degradation of soil and some of the solutions that I think we need to you know, look at and focus on implementing on the ground to ensure that we bring back the quality of soil that we used to have back in the day. Some of the things that I've noticed personally is that, number one, there is what we call nutrient degradation. Soil contains nutrients. Now one thing that I've noticed, especially in this area that we are at, most farmers extract more nutrients than what they put in. This area focuses mostly on you know, uh, organic fertilizer. But you remember when you we were talking about organic fertilizer, we, 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 we mentioned that there is that organic fertilizer that doesn't come from a factory. Um, it just comes right from, you know, like your sheep pen or your, your, your cow, whatever. It's called a cow shed or something. So you just take it directly from there. You go put it somewhere, decompose it, whatever that happens, that whole process. Then you take directly to the farm. You've not really, uh, you know, tested to know the levels of nitrogen, whatever nutrients that are there. So at the end of the day, in that particular video, we said that most organic fertilizer compared to uh, most organic fertilizers compared to artificial fertilizers do not have uh, the required amount of nutrients that the soil needs. So you'll find that in most developing countries, most people use organic fertilizer from there, from their cow shed or from their livestock generally. And these do not really put into the soil the amount of nutrients that the plants that farmers plant extract from the soil. So in the long run, you find that uh, our soil keeps degrading in terms of the nutrient, con uh, the, the nutrient content. If you move around Kajiado, you'll find that there are areas where people have abandoned planting because they say it's derelict land. But in my own opinion, I personally think that they've used so much nutrients around that particular area that they've decided to move to another place. And this has actually been caused also by leasing of land. People lease land, use all the nutrients that they, there is in that particular piece of land. They don't get, you know, they don't put in nutrients uh, into that particular soil or that land compared to what they're getting from. So there's what we call nutrient degradation. Number two, we have what we call salinization or salinization, wherever it is that you learned your English from. Salinization basically is, um, there are areas in Kenya, I'll just, as I've said, I'm using examples from where I am. There are areas in Kenya that don't have fresh water, right? If you're not in that area, maybe this does not affect you. But if you look at areas like the coastal region, even here in Kajiado, we have salty water. Now, too much use of this salty water, we call it saline water. Most irrigation schemes, remember we talked about the weather pattern. So right now, most people are, are digging boreholes. And when you dig boreholes in these areas, you'll find saline water. Now, too much use of this saline water ends up degrading the soil, right? After a while, you find that this specific soil cannot produce the way it used to do because of too much salt in the, in the soil. A solution could be getting you know, those machines or those, those equipment that are used to desalinize uh, you know, water. But now that is an expensive affair. Maybe government needs to come in and you know, try and find ways in which they can support small farmers by desalinizing uh, the water that they are using in their irrigation schemes. Yeah? The third thing that contributes, in my own opinion, to soil degradation in developing countries is agrochemical pollution. Now, I don't know if you guys saw this story. There's a story in, in the coast about lead poisoning, where there's a company that set up that was, I think they used to produce batteries or something, and they had to use lead, and the, you know, the byproduct of the whole thing was poisonous, and they used to release it to uh, the area around and it actually cost people 
a lot of harm in terms of most people had cancer around the area uh, and this thing actually was discharged even into the ocean it was in the coastal area of Mombasa I think if you go to a place like um, uh, Lake Victoria around the area of Lake Victoria there are companies there that release their their their, their waste into the lake right they discharge all their waste into the lake and in the as a result because most people use also this water from the lake for their own farming activities you find that at the end of the day too much use of this water from agrochemical pol uh, polluted uh, water uh, will result into the destruction of our soil quality right so you'll find areas around these big factories I think you've noticed that if you go to areas that have factories around them uh, there is little activities going on with regards to farming because of that pollution, agrochemical pollution, especially those factories that don't know how to discharge or, you know, to release their waste in, a, in the recommended way. The fourth reason why there's a lot of soil degradation in, uh, you know, developing countries is soil erosion. Now, one thing that we were blessed with are mountains, valleys and all that. These are scenic beauty, by the way. Most people come from different places to come you know, enjoy the scenic beauty that these developing countries have. By the way, developing countries have the best scenic beauty, you know, generally speaking. But one thing that this has, the effect that it has on our soil is what we call soil erosion because having mountain, you know, uh, valleys and, you know, mountains, it kind of creates what we call sloppy land. And when you have sloppy land and there is, for example, rain or flowing water, it washes away the nutrients that are actually on the topsoil. Now, just apart from the mountainous and valleys, you find that areas such as Kajiado, where we are, are flat and bare. Most areas in uh, some counties, especially like, for example, here in Kajiado, they are bare. They don't have vegetative matter, uh, you know, on the soil. And remember, when you have vegetation on top of your soil, it kind of helps hold the soil. But now, if you don't have that, it means the soil will be bare. And if the soil is bare, then when wind comes, like this area is so windy, when it comes, it actually blows away the soil. And long term blowing away of this soil kind of, you know, blows away the soil to other areas, the quality soil that you need when it comes to farming. So that's why they always advise people, if you have land, don't leave it bare, at least plant something so that the soil can actually be held firmly by the types of, you know, vegetation that you plant. Now, lastly, in my opinion, I think there is also what we call vegetati vegetation degradation. If you look at places like Mao Summit, remember there was a political issue in Kenya where our current opposition leader by then was a prime minister. He wanted to evict people from the Mao forest simply because people were cutting down trees in the forest because they wanted to settle and also do their agricultural activities there. So that too has actually contributed to the degradation of uh, of of soil in developing countries you find that most developing countries have huge population developing world goes hand in hand with huge population so with with huge population comes the demand for land and when the land that you have is not enough most people will start encroaching to you know forests and all that now when you do that it means you have to go and clear the forest and when you settle of course you'll not settle without food so you'll not only clear a place for your own house, you'll also clear, you know, uh, some space where you're going to plant your crops. So long term you find that if you go to Mao Summit or Mao Forest right now, you'll find there are patches. Hardly would you see the original Mao Forest that used to be there because of, you know, encroachment. So what are the solutions that you think we can do or government can actually implement when it comes to soil degradation? I'm just trying to improve the quality of soil. Number one, there's what we call terracing and building of gabions. Remember during Moi era, for those people who are not there, he was so passionate about agriculture and he used to promote things that would, you know, improve quality of soil. So he would encourage people to, when you cut one tree, you plant two, like it was government policy then. Um, uh, before you cut a tree, you had to get a permit from your chief. It was government policy. I don't know right now because I see a lot of logging happening. But anyway, during that time there was that. 
And where we had sloppy land used to fund the building of gabions and terraces that would actually help, uh, you know, prevent soil erosion. The second thing uh, we need to also do is to consider adding nutrients to nutrient depleted soils. Don't just leave land after you've used, especially for those people who are leasing land. Don't just plant your stuff and after you've already used the land, you, moved, you go lease another land somewhere else. Let's try and see if we can add nutrients to that nutrient depleted soil. Thirdly, I think we need to rebuild our topsoil and one of the, the ways in which we can rebuild our topsoil is to ensure that we plant vegetation. I keep telling people, don't leave your land bare, plant anything, just plant something that will hold your topsoil family together. I think we also need to practice conservation farming. Now what do we mean by conservation farming? Conservation farming is where you don't just farm to go, you don't farm to reap the benefits of farming alone. You farm, but in a, uh, as you're doing farming, you also conserve the environment around your, your area. So this can include, I've seen people where uh, they, they, they do farming where trees are, they don't cut down the trees. Conservation farming also includes things like permaculture. Of course, the other thing is doing afforestation, where it is that you are ensure that you plant trees and protect those trees until they get to a stage where they can support themselves in terms of nutrients, water, and all that. If you're in a community, you might have an area, you might allocate an area where you just say this area is supposed to be planted trees. Yeah? So ensure that, uh, you know, come together as a community, do agroforestry together, and ensure that uh, at least that area has trees. Burn. The other thing is uh, we need to do uh, water saving type of, agri uh, of irrigation. Water saving type of irrigation is like drip irrigation. Don't just do irrigation like the sprinkle type. I think it's, um, there's what we call rain gun, using the rain gun and all that. That is wastage of water. Yeah, and uh, that kind of spoils or rather destroys the soil uh, quality. And also harvest water whenever there is rain. Make sure you build ridges, um, construct ridges on your, on your roofs and harvest that water and use that water. Because one thing about rainfall, uh, rainfall water is that it's not saline, it is actually fresh. That would be actually the perfect water to use in your agricultural activities. Build uh, your underground storage, make sure that you harvest your water and use it for your agricultural purposes. Last but not least, have what we call community-based uh, natural resource management. Uh, one thing I love about this area, especially the natives around this area, they have policies when it comes to natural resources. You are not just going to use the natural resources, even if it's in your own land, <laughs> and you're wasting it, they'll come and tell you, hey, this is not the right way to do. So you can also do it wherever it is that you are, have some sort of a community way of managing your natural resources. I think those are the solutions that I think we can implement. Otherwise, um, I think that's it for us today. If you have any question or feedback that uh, you want to give us, kindly go to the comment section. Don't leave this video without you know, leaving a like. Make sure you click on the like button so that at least the video can actually spread to other people using the Google algorithm uh, that will help spread the video. So don't leave this without liking the video. Otherwise, for those people who want to connect with us, you can always connect with us on our social media platforms at Africa Farming KE on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Thread. Uh, on Facebook, we are Africa Farming. And also on YouTube, we are Africa Farming. For those people who want to link with us on our telephone number, it is actually on the description section. Kindly, uh, you know, send a text or you can actually call us and we'll actually be able to um, respond to your requests. And I think that's it for us today. Remember, we're on the journey to 10,000 subscribers. I don't know as at this time when we're shooting this video, I think we are around 3,000 and something subscribers. So don't leave without subscribing if you've not yet subscribed. Let's get together. Remember Africa Farming, we learn together every day. So join the Africa Farming family by subscribing, hit the notification bell, and be part of this growing family. But until next time, changamka na ukulima. Bye-bye. Santeni sana, santeni, santeni.